All right, good morning, class. Class. Good morning, uh, fellow classmates and uh, professor. Um, so today I'll be presenting my presentation on Edward Weston. And my name is Leonel Sanchez, a presentation done by me. All right. So before I get into uh, his work and the type of uh, photography he likes to, um, to capture, I'm going to give a quick intro into his bio, and then later on, we'll get into his death. But before I get into his bio, I just want to note that he's considered one of the most influential photographers um, in America. And then uh, the style of photography, just to give you a, a quick um, recap, it's a, it's a style called surrealism, which is like a crisp style with an illusion of a three-dimensionality. And originally, uh, Mr. Weston here is uh, from Illinois. Uh, he began photogra uh, photography and um, at the age of 16, after his daddy gave him like, I believe it was a bullseye number two camera. Uh, after that, he uh, continued to grow. Uh, he learned that he had a passion for photography. So he then moved to California. Um, after that, he began working briefly as a surveyor for uh, for San Pedro in Los Angeles and Salt Lake Railroad. Um, he began working as an itinerant photographer. If you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, you follow someone or someone will give you a job and you go like do that job for them, kind of like a, as an assistant. Um, he then uh, worked his way up. Um, I believe after that, he, he went to his neighbors and he asked if he could uh, take photos of like their kids, pets, and eventually he would do funerals as well. Um, <clears throat> after that, he, need, he realized he needed formal training. So he went back home, back to Illinois and attended the College of Photography in Effingham, Illinois. Um, he, com he completed that course, uh, it was a 12 month course and he completed it in six months. After that, shortly, he went back to California and uh, he was employed as a retoucher at a Georgia Spectral Portrait Studio in 1909. Uh, he then uh, moved back to California where he met his first wife, Flora Chandler, back also in 1909. He continued to have four children with her, which were Edward, Theodore, Lawrence, and Cole. Um, and then in 1911, he settled down, um, opened up his own portrait studio in California. This would be the base of his operations, uh, mainly where he would do all his work. And then, uh, so he, be, throughout the years through his uh, career, he created a portfolio and be, he knew he had a disease um, known as Parkinson's disease. And he knew his time was gonna come. So he wanted to finish his final piece, the portfolio, which I can quickly show you. Um, these are some examples. This one's called cabbage leaf. This one's called pepper. And then this one's a, a shell. I believe most of the shells were taken in, in Carmel. Um, and then before I move on, I would like to show you the portfolio. Um, these are the dates and then the, the location where it was taken, as well as the name of the, um, of, of the photograph. So you can see he started like as soon as 1924, and I believe his last ones were like in 1940, because uh, I believe he, he had Parkinson's disease. Um, he was diagnosed with like 46. Um, <clears throat> so this is one of my favorites from his work. Uh, this is a portrait of Manuel Hernandez Galvan. Um, Basically, it's a black, a medium-sized black and white uh, photograph of the Mexican general and senator uh, taken by Edward Weston. Uh, the photograph shows his left side of Gavan's face and neck, which fill most of the frame up. Um, <clears throat> I would say it's my favorite just because I like uh, close-ups and like take, taking photography of uh, other people and acknowledging their beauty. Um, the close-up, uh, the nature of the composition and the sharp focus on the face, it's the expression lend the image uh, psychological intensity. Um, 
This was taken in 1924 during Weston's first extended trips to Me Mexico. Uh, he had first arrived there in 1923 and got to know Mr. Galvan. Um, in 1932, Weston inspired the formation and subsequently joined the Photographic Collective in Mexico. So then from there, his style influenced other styles in Mexico. Um, it bears similarities with the pure style through its deep contrast between light and dark tones. It's a high level of detail in the way in which it represents the form of Gavan's head and an isolation against the plain background. And then this one here is um, Shells. It's one of those iconic pieces. Um, it was taken in 1927 and it's basically a medium sized black and white photograph taken by Mr. Weston. Uh, the combined shells, which is this piece and this piece, are set against a plain dark background with their pale tones, mean that they shine brightly against it. Their curves appear to blend into one abstract form, although the top of the composition and the nautilus shell curves forward, giving the overall shape like a seahorse, as you can tell. Um, the bottom of the form is also curved and the surface on it, which rests is slightly convex such as a shell, shell shape appears precautiously balanced. Um, Weston took this photograph in his studio in Glendale, California, back in 1927. To do so, he carefully placed two shells into position and photographed them using a long exposure time of several hours, a process that lent to the intensity contrast between light and the shadow in the image. Um, this is an example of pure and straight style that characterized Weston's style of photographs. Uh, these terms first emerged in 1980 to refer to a photographic approach uh, that prioritized high contrast, sharp focus, and emphasis on formal qualities of the subject, as opposed to the pictorialist tradition, in which subjects were photographically manipulated through soft focus and cropping composition image techniques. And again, that was one of his iconic ones. And then, um, sadly, he was diagnosed or he began experiencing symptoms of Parkinson's disease in 1946. And in 1948, shot his last photograph of Point Lobos. In 1946, the Museum of Modern Art, New York, featured a major retrospect of 300 prints from S. Weston's work, uh, basically honoring him. Over the next 10 years, progressively encapsulating his illness, Weston uh, supervised the printing of the prints by his sons. So Brett and Cole, his sons, took over. Um, his 50th anniversary portfolio was published in 1952 with photographs printed by Brett, one of his sons. Um, a series of eight to 10 prints from 832 negative considered Edward's lifetime the best. Um, he proceeded to die uh, on January 1st in 1958 at his house in Wildcat Hill in Carmel, California, which is pretty close to us. Um, his, his ashes were then scattered into the Pacific Ocean at Pebbly Beach at Point Lobos. And that will be my presentation. Uh, thank you for watching.